I was your Saturday night at ATX. <laughs> I'm so excited that you all managed to make it here after your Saturday night at ATX. I'm gonna try and get in this chair now. Um, and I am so pleased to be here with a woman that I have long admired who has been holding it down for black women for years. <laughs> right. And her husband, who is no slouch of his own, who's been helping her hold it down for black women for years, please welcome to the stage Ms. Mar Brock Akeel and Salim Akeel. Join the party. All right, so Black Lightning. I am so excited about this. Um, I know that um, you're coming home, kind of, to the CW with this. You had been at UPN, and which had merged with the WB that became the CW. <laughs> so, um, the right, mutant, yeah. exactly, the mutant for the mutant show. And I want to know how Black Lightning came to you. Well, it came to us in our. We have a new deal at. We're what through our first year of um, our through our first year with Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And so it was a conversation about, hey, what we wanna do and what do they have? And it, Black Lightning was mentioned in the room and really, Salim, it was like, Salim, that's perfect for you. <laughs> and, and so we were excited about doing it. And had you been fans of the comic before you signed on to do the show? I had been a fan of the comics. Uh, I knew that Warner Brothers had uh, a deal with DC and that they had uh, a, a group of comics under the banner of Milestone, mm -hmm. and they were all African-American superheroes, and I wanted that. I wanted all of the Milestone universe. <laughs> and they were like, just slow down, just slow down. It's One your first, first year of your deal, just slow down there again. But uh, they said, we, we can't get to that right away, but we have this thing called Black Lightning, would you be interested? And I was sort of like, oh, you know. But inside, I was like, yeah, you know. They, <laughs> so that's how it came about. And well, I had not I had not heard of Black Lightning before, and actually, um, my introduction into comics period was falling in love with Salim. And I remember when we moved in together, and I was like, "What's this box?" <laughs> and it was like, and just was, one box. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a it was a big box, and I was like, mm, "What's in here?" And so it was all these comic books, and I was like, mm, "My bookshelf, our bookshelf." <laughs> it doesn't really, it, it doesn't, I don't know how they stand up and look so cute like that. Like, how, <laughs> how does that work? And anyway, it was, I, it cut to flash forward, the box has not gone anywhere. It's still with us. And then um, our firstborn uh, came about, and I mean, literally, he's still an infant at this point. And Salim was at the t-shirt shop. And that, uh, was it Iron? It was Icon. Icon. See? <laughs> and, and Icon, and he has all these... Um, the t-shirts didn't exist. So he's like, I'm gonna make these t-shirts for my baby. And, and, and so it was, it was, it's really been nice, but through him and through the kids, I really opened up to, oh, how to tell stories in this medium and really been fun to come along for the ride. And it really is, I know sometimes people look at superheroes in comics and they think of them in a, a small box and it really is a big storytelling platform. And for you specifically, Salim, it seems to me, since you had been working a lot in the shows that were focused, obviously there are women on this show, but there's, this is obviously a very strong male voice show and I'm imagining that was part of the allure for you. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, One of the things that I told uh, Warner Brothers is that I wanted to reintroduce a certain type of black man back into the conversation. And Jefferson Pierce was perfect for me. You know, he's a father, he was a, a principal, he's a superhero, and he's someone that's in love with his wife, but they can't be together because of his powers. But I thought that that was a great opportunity to explore different themes in, in the world of relationships, but also specifically uh, African-American people. And can we just talk about Cress Williams for a minute? This man has been, he has been on every show on yes. television ever. I remember first seeing him, uh, I think it might have been on Veronica Mars, but he's been on The West Wing, yeah. ER, Grey's Anatomy, Beverly Hills 90210, which I think. He was Scooter on <laughs> Living Single. He, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's how I became to know Cress Williams. Yeah, absolutely. And that was a good match, actually. Yeah. But, um, but I just love that this really is sort of his biggest starring role to date, and I'm curious how you guys chose him. He, he, I mean, 
he just embodied the material when he auditioned. It wasn't a, it wasn't a big conversation. I mean, once he walked into the room, uh, he just sort of, he was Jefferson Pierce. And I know that sounds cliche, but you, you know, that's for a director and a writer and executive producers, that makes your day easy. <laughs> you know, you see a lot of people, and a lot of people with names, name value. Yeah. But we try to always pick the person that embodies the character because they're gonna have to live with it in, you know, for five, six years, hopefully. Seven, eight yeah. years. <laughs> as long as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, what I found interesting, Greg is working on the show in some capacity, Greg Berlanti, right? He's an executive producer. Yes, he's partnered with us on this. We, we need, you know, Greg Berlanti and Warner Brothers have been, you know, making tel television together for many, many years. And having been the foundation, I think, a lot for the DC comic television um, uh, shows, G Greg was a part of, before we came in, he was a part of the Black Lightning um, they had tried to get it off the ground, I think, maybe a couple of years before, yeah. and it didn't work out. And when they knew we were coming, they just sort of held on to it. Mm. Uh, man, these panels in the morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my voice is awake, <laughs> <laughs> is awake yet. I asked about so. Greg specifically, though, because he also oversees uh, you know, the Arrowverse, all the other shows in the yes. CW. And then I heard that this show isn't gonna be part of that. And I'm, I have to admit, I was kind of like, why? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what's going to make it different. We're going to create our own world. And I think, I think because of the way that we're going about with the storytelling, it's a, uh, it's a little bit more political. It's, 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 um, it's topical. And it's a little grittier. You know, I don't know which trailer you guys saw, but there's a 15-minute version of it as well. And you really, get the, you really understand why when you see that. Um, it doesn't mean that down the road that there won't be visits, but uh, we wanted to set uh, a template uh, in a different way for this character, because if you've read the comic book, the comic book itself is very political mm -hmm. and very um, community-based, and we wanted to do uh, you know, social justice issues and certain things like that. So I guess they, p people have been saying it's grittier or more real. And I didn't want to mix that up with something that wasn't um, on the same uh, thought wave. You know, going back to what you were saying also about, you know, this ushering in the male voice. And, you know, in, you, in the introductions you mentioned, Omar, you've done a lot for black women's voices. And Salim has been right there by my side helping us craft those stories, those portraits, put those portraits out there. But what's interesting in today's time, black males' bodies um, are at the, and they're, and they're, it's at the center of like, you know, of a lot of our conversation, yet in television, where is that black male voice speaking to those issues front and center? And that's another thing I, I'm really excited about Black Lightning is and one because Salim gets to sort of usher in his voice. You know, with our company, you know, it takes a village to make these shows. I think you know, at a conference like this or a festival like this, we you really know that. But in, in but in the village is being led by one vision, and made with many voices. And I'm really excited about hearing the black male voice in the, in, the, in the conversation of social justice and, and the challenges out there to be a black man, but also to be just human. But, but from that lens and that perspective and seeing, you know, black men are taking care of their families, but the narrative that's always talked about is that they're, you know, they're not there, they're missing. Um, and that's not true. And, and I think that, that, that image, that image of a father saving his daughters, protecting his family, protecting his school, protecting his community. It is happening, but it's not the narrative. And so in, in one way, this show is sort of the, the, um, the kryptonite to the, you know, to the media mixing narrative. my, you know, comic book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, I got yeah. one, one or two. <laughs> I think it's also an opportunity to put things in context. Um, our experience here has been in America has been very unique, and right now it's an, it's an interesting time because if you think about it, we're only maybe one generation up out of Jim Crow, and you know, and the race starts right. It's like 
you're out of slavery, you're in Jim Crow, okay, you're out of Jim Crow now, run, you know, catch up with everybody, you know what I mean? But there's so many things that are ills in our community because of how we entered this conversation, bless, bless you. you. And so I think helping put those things in context will help any person looking at our culture understand why so many young black men are unemployed. They were never meant to be employed. And so it's difficult to take a whole race of people that were never meant to be employed and then employ them in a, in a, in a real way. It's very difficult to take a whole group of people and educate them when they were never meant to be educated. They were never meant to be housed. So when you talk about projects, those things were projects. How do we house all of these people that were never meant to be housed and, take, and, and integrate them into a society? that they were never meant to be integrated into. And I think people really don't have that historical perspective on our neighborhoods or, the, or our people. You know, they talk about black women in teen pregnancy, well, and, and black marriage. You have to remember, we were never meant to be married. And black young women were always meant to have babies because that was part of the product that was sold here. So when you're going from a, a product to a people, and it's sort of a hands-off. The, the same government that brought you here takes a hands-off approach to it, then it's chaos, right? So when you put all of that in context, when you start to put all of that in context, and you have uh, Jefferson Pierce, who's an educator, and who wants to help his community, that character can help put that in context, and I think it's a, a very important context. No, it's a great opportunity, and it's a super timely, and I'm curious if, some of the shows that have come on in the last few years, you know, we talk about some of the progress that we've made with Blackish and with Underground and with Being Mary Jane, which is, we need to talk about that too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, Fresh Off the Boat and, you know, some other shows that we're seeing it on one side of the camera, but now I feel like we're maybe finally starting to see it on this side of the camera too, which is something that makes a big difference in telling these stories. And do you have a, a sense that progress is actually being made or that's just the visible part is what the progress is. Is the invisible part behind the camera where you guys are, do you see progress being made there? Well, I've always seen progress because that's what we do. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know for our company, um, I guess what they call diversity has always been uh, in our world. I've never been on a show where I felt like, you know, I was the only black person, because I wasn't, because we've, we've always employed black folk, and we did that on purpose. If you're talking about in the wider industry, I think that, yeah, progress has been made. We would be foolish not to say that, but that doesn't negate the fact that there needs to be more done, right? right. For women, men, black men, and, you know, other so-called minorities. Um, so when we say progress has been made, of course, you know, no, you know, you're not seeing lynchings every other day, you know what I mean? And so that's progress. You know, you can see people like get shot bar. every other day, but at least it's a bullet, not a rope. Uh, I know, my humor is so dark. Yeah, it's Sunday morning. <laughs> Setting a very low bar for progress I here. I, no. could, I could see the looks on no, their faces. I, oh my God, no. He's talking about lynching and bullets. It's but we about superheroes. But, but, but progress, I think, too, is coming from, you know, I was just looking at the trailer. I know this is, I'm skipping toward movies, and we're talking, but it, I think it's all sort of weaving together. Like, you know, the Black Panther trailer is out, and there's a lot, that, a lot of buzz around that. And, and I think, and Luke Cage before this, and so it, it really sort of puts the, the, the stairs, you know, to, it, Luke Cage was a big hit. Black Lightning will be a great hit. Black Panther will be that, you know, whichever, whichever order they're coming in. Even Wonder Woman. And it's interesting when you say progress. One of the things I think is interesting to watch is what the audience is saying they will or will not. Audience are shutting things down. They're like, nope, not seeing that. <laughs> and you're, yeah, yeah, I know you spent $100 million on that. Oh, I know you spent a lot of money on that TV show. But you're serving me, all audience, not just black. All audience is like, nope, that's not authentic. Nope, you didn't spend, you didn't do it justice or service or why did you cut that culture out or you know it's it's 
uh, that is also progressive for me, is that the power of the audience deciding, no, no, I do want to know about other, other um, uh, cultures. I, w I do want to know about that. I'm going to show up, you know, and, and I think that's really exciting. I think that's what the medium at its best can do, is be an you know, like a book in a, in a lot of ways, but big pictures. <laughs> but it's, but it, 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 um, it lets you into a world. It introduces you into a, um, a community or a point of view or a character. Um, maybe you saw, you mentioned Barry, being Mary Jane, maybe you saw this black woman anchor, just curious about her life. Maybe, maybe just the introduction into that, that narrative allows for a conversation or um, a knowing before you, I mean, you may not ever, you know, you just had a curiosity and you just wanted to know. And so that TV show just lets you in. And I think that's what I think TV can do at its best is sort of introduce us to each other's humanity if we allow it. And A, also if the storytellers get it right. Yeah. And that is a partnership with what are you bringing to the context of a Black Lightning character? What are you bringing to Jefferson? What are you bringing to that context so that when we tell that story and you're partnering with Warner Brothers and you're partnering with Berlanti to say, guys, are we all on the same page? Are we gonna follow, all these voices gonna follow this vision and believe in it and support it so we can get it out there to the audience um, to then do the dance with us? And, and so anyway, I, I think it could, it, so that's progress for me as well. Absolutely, and, and you talk about audience, and one of the things that I think about in the distance between Girlfriends and Black Lightning is that we now have social media platforms where the audience is showing up in a really loud way, which is great, and I mean, showing advertisers and showing networks. We're here, and we want to see this stuff. Oh, yeah, here's a the little tidbit that when Girlfriends was canceled, um, apparently, um, this is like right in the, this was the, the reason why Girlfriends went to the CW is because they needed the audience to help launch the new network. And when it was canceled, apparently, um, or well, I think, no, let me back up. When they thought it was potentially going to get canceled, you know, every year is like, is it coming back? Is it not coming back? Like a game show. And, uh, and then apparently letters and they broke the phone system. Fans broke the phone system at UPN. And, but UPN's not gonna report that if they want to cancel it. <laughs> They're not gonna, you know, they had they held the power. So when social media came about and the game was canceled, it was in alignment with Twitter at the time. Twitter was the hot thing, right as we were relaunching on BET. And to your point, well, even prior to that, social media, Facebook was the, how we got even the audience was saying, you know what, if you're gonna cancel on the CW, BET, why don't you pick it up? And BET was already interested, but coming into the room or coming into that meeting, it was like, they, had, they already had four or five million uh, uh, followers on, on the Facebook page. And they were like, what? We don't get these, we don't get these numbers for our, for our TV shows and what, what is happening. I was like, well, what have we been trying to tell you? People like the show, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but you have to use your charts and your measurements and then you just don't also trust the gut and also know, but it was a new measurement tool. Wow. And, and not only did it was a, a sort of a check in a, in a box, it was also a check in the box with a whole lot to say. I mean, you know, fans have a lot to say about the TV shows. And I think those things really, did empower um, this progress because that measurement, like I said before, they can shut something down or they can lift something up. And 7.7 .7 million viewers, we still hold history and in, in, in cable history, and I'm really proud of that. And that's because people want more of this. And it's not just domestic. It is a global, I mean, I know for us, a lot of our work, it's been, you know, there's a global um, audience for what we have. Like, so anyway, I lost my train yeah, of thought well, I'm, now. Hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping the same thing happens for Underground. And you know, the same thing happened for the Mindy Project and for Nashville and for, I mean, a lot of shows, fans are, and it's not just, you know, sending things to the network or breaking, I mean, it's like hard numbers that they're able to get now yeah. and it's exciting. But as far as Black Lightning is concerned, you're gonna hear from people, you know, the <laughs> superhero world. <laughs> people are not gonna be holding their opinions back. So are you ready for that? Because, you know, Comic book fans are some vocal fans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, I'm ready for it. I mean, I have a, you know, very, I don't really, um, 
have a very thick skin, they call it. Mm. And I enjoy reading people's comments, especially the negative ones. <laughs> All right, mark this date. Somebody that he just said that he enjoyed reading the yeah. negative ones. I, I, I remember when, uh, when we decided to do Sparkle, and I remember reading the comments and one of the announcements, you know, one of the comments, oh, they're gonna fuck this up. <laughs> You know, I love that kind of stuff. It's almost like you're super, it, 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 it does charge you. I mean, it does uh, challenge you. You're like, oh, okay, bet, you know, that, let's go, let's go, um, bite me. Yeah. So um, in terms of, from a storytelling perspective, um, you have a case of the week for a, not a better way to put it, and then an overarching storyline. That's generally how superhero shows work. Is that gonna be sort of, he fights for a specific thing every week, but then there is a larger storyline that you're telling? See, that's why we need storytellers, because you don't want to, no, no, that's not gonna be, I mean, that ha that happens. There's a formula, yes, to telling stories. There, there is a, a way, but there's many ways, and I think that's what I'm really excited about. It's a character, it's a, it's a character-driven show, you know, and we're, I don't know if there's going to be a fight every week. It's certainly not going to be a villain of the week. I don't want to do that. We really want to explore um, the characters, even the villains. You know, I think one of the most interesting characters from a storytelling standpoint right now is Tobias. I mean, because we're not having him sort of you know, twist his mustache. You know, it's coming from a real, his, his hatred for himself and others comes from a real place. And we wanna know why he's like that. And so I don't, we're not gonna have people, you know, flying around a lot. You know, we're gonna have fun. You know, you're gonna see, obviously, you're gonna see the powers because he has powers. But I think it's time to explore these characters from, um, a more internal space, a more internal place. And so our approach is going to be a character-based family drama. And then what happens out of that um, in using your powers and why you use them and how you use them will, will come out of the storytelling. Because a lot of times people approach superpowers as completely positive. Like, I got these powers, so that's great, right? But we're going to look at the positive and the negative aspects of having powers, and I think that that's going to be interesting as well. And also, then the, you know, the, there's the overlay about the family, and, and like without superpowers, it's 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 challenging raising, challenging and fun, and all in between about raising children, especially at a time when they're trying to leave the nest or create their own identity or have their um, opinions that are very different from your own. Um, and so that's gonna be fun to watch. And then now, here your daughters are, and they actually have superpowers. Whereas you acquired yours, they were born with theirs. So even those dynamics and how I want to use them and wield them or, you know, just as, you know, if you sort of take the, the idea of, of just, you know, raising children, you're, I'm afraid, you're, the things that you're afraid of, like, you know, drugs, dating, sex, you know, just not finding their way, depression, you know, all these sort of th things that you're worried about, then imagine also, <laughs> they, you know, the, the dangers of being, so that's, that's fun and also just to see and, and sometimes just for images, like I think, gosh, I cannot wait to see these young ladies, brown girls, brown young women in superhero suits. I don't, yes. I've never yes. seen that. I just yes. never seen that. And I, I'm getting goosebumps when I think about what that, what that image would have done for me. Like I, when I think about, I, I, I watched Wonder Woman. I loved Almighty Isis. I was just like, but I remember loving that. But again, I still never saw myself. You're still looking for yourself in a lot of ways. And now you can see aspects of it. And you can grab that and think, oh, I'll, I'll do that, I'll do that. But the impact to see brown girls, see brown girls in a superhero suit. And even the way that you're saying, honey, that it's the good and the bad. It's not wearing that suit is responsible. If there's a responsibility that comes with it, if there's a sacrifice that comes with it, there's a lot to come with power and empower, being empowered and how we're gonna use our gifts, our individual gifts of everyone in this room and even ourselves. Like how do I use my storytelling gift? 
But an image like that reminds you and makes you pull your shoulders back Absolutely. and, you know, and I'm, I'm really excited for that. I, I tell Celine when, when, when the suit, Laura Jean, uh, our costume designer, who she, she did the first Iron Man suit, right, in the new movie Jumanji that's coming out. We were just so excited. She was excited about Black Lightning. She goes, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this. But when she first put out the Black Lightning suit, I couldn't, I, I got so excited. Like, my, we have sons. Our, our black boys are going to see a costume and have, and we have one at an age who still likes to wear costumes. Like, maybe he will get a Black Lightning costume before he grows out of that, yes. that phase in his life. And what is that going to be like? And I, our neighborhood in L.A., we, it's, it's, it's big on Halloween. And I, I, I just keep imagining myself opening the door and just seeing that costume. <laughs> I just like, you know, it's, it's one of the, sometimes when things you get, you know, like, oh, how, you know, it, when you, when you decide to make this amazing job hard <laughs> and you get a little weird, I think about that. I think about that. Okay, no, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep figuring this out. What do you need? What do we do? Um, we got to get this on um, for those reasons as well, for that Absolutely. progress. Absolutely. Because the progress may not be in the industry. The progress may be, and I hope so. I hope this is where the progress really is is how we're affecting audience, and more specifically, how we are helping children reimagine and help fix a lot of the things that we haven't gotten to yet. It's the progress in the wider world. I mean, I think a show like Girlfriends, Living Single, I mean, at the time that those were on for women that were my age at the time, I mean, it was revolutionary. I love designing women. I love the Golden yeah. Girls. I love Sex in the City, but having girlfriends, I mean, was me, you know what I mean? And it made a difference. And I remember saying to somebody the other day, if Electra Woman had been black and Diana Girl had been Latino, there would have been a lot of really different lives. Because <laughs> you never know. But I want to ask you about superheroes specifically because obviously this is something, I mean, it's aspirational and it's been in our culture for you know nearly 100 years. We've always had these ideas. And what do you think it is about right now that we are, I mean, there's five shows on the CW alone. The movie theaters are filled with superhero shows. What is it? that is resonating with the wider world at large that we are gobbling this stuff up when it's good? I think it's just, you know, Cain and Abel. You know, it's the good and evil. I think people enjoy knowing that there's someone out there that can save them and someone out there that can, especially now, you know, especially now, people feel, uh, I, I think personally, people feel a lack of control in their lives. It seems like there's always something to be afraid of. You know, uh, fear is running rampant through our, our country. And I think that these shows give you hope. I mean, I think it's really simple. I don't think it's a complicated thing at all. It, it works on a very uh, emotional level that you can turn on the television and somebody can do something really bad to the community, but somebody will show up and save, save you. Uh, we all want that. We all want that right now. Yeah. Um, and then just from uh, that, a storytelling standpoint, I mean, there is a, a line that you have to walk with superhero shows, even one that is sort of as grounded as this. I mean, we are talking about a man who like draws powers from electricity. And so how do you balance sort of keeping it as real as possible, but giving that sort of thrill aspect? Well, again, I think you have to create a character that people can identify with. That's the balance. You, you know, they're always going to enjoy the, the powers. I'm sorry? Oh, no. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, I think they're always going to enjoy the, the, the superhero aspect, and we want people to. But I think the grounded nature of it is understanding what this man's problems are, what he's dealing with on a daily basis, what his joys are. Um, how do these powers affect his body? I mean, he's older, you know what I mean? He's, so he's, it's painful, you know, going out there getting hit and shit and shot. <laughs> you know, I think that that's, I think showing that he's aging is, is important and I think that that will keep it grounded. Talk, talking about the things that a lot of shows don't talk about. How does it feel when you, you know, I think in the trailer he gets shot, right? How does that feel when you go home and you take the suit off? It's like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you're jumping and you're, you're hitting. No one ever talks about how that feels. So I think that 
within itself is going to keep it grounded. You know what I mean? And seeing, as Mara said, you know, seeing Thunder, when she realizes, when Anissa realizes she has powers, going through Vogue and Essence magazine, trying to figure out what her suit looks like, you know. Um, I think trying to find a suit that can fit all that ass in there is another thing, because, you know, black women's bodies are different, you know what I mean? And I think actually talking about those things, you know what I mean, actually speaking on it, I think will keep it grounded and fun. You know what I mean? And the Because brothers are going to see thunder going around, you know, the city fighting crime, and they're going to be like, would you hit it, man? I hit it, you know. <laughs> Is that not appropriate to say? No. I don't know. It may not be appropriate, but the network it's real. is really happy about right? that. It's real. <laughs> So I think seeing those conversations, I, I think uh, allowing for the fun of those conversations and not taking it too seriously uh, will keep everything grounded and, and keep it fun and interesting. I found too that when you do engage in, um, in those character details, in those new, in just getting into it. So when you hit with then the special effects fight scenes and the, you know, and the, Ground, uh, coming from a character-based place, even in that being in, being in sync with the comic, it just makes it explosive. So it's it's rhythm, it's jazz. It's um, it's funny going back to girlfriends. I know one of the successes of girlfriends was that we were not afraid to take the pause and be dramatic. We didn't overdo it, but when we did it, it was a note that just kept people engaged. But so we do we would keep exploring story grounded in comedy, but sometimes we weren't, a, we, we hit it with a dramatic note. So I guess I sort of also see this in that way. Engaged character, really good storytelling with or without the suit. But then when we hit you with the suit, you're like, oh man, yeah. it's, when's next was, week coming? There's a moment, and I think they cut it out of the trailer for time, but in that moment when he gets shot, that moment, it, he says in the dialogue to the guy, he says, wow, you didn't even give a brother an opportunity to say something heroically clever. <laughs> now you just piss me off. <laughs> so that was actually the line. Now it's a funny line, but in my mind, it was like, well, damn, I come back, and, you know, I'm the first black superhero on that work television except for Mantis, I think there was Mantis, but <laughs> I'm, I'm Black Lightning and I'm back and you, you just took my moment away, you know what I mean? <laughs> so in my mind when I was writing it, it was kind of like that, but I also think that everybody would appreciate the fact that Black Lightning uses a different vernacular when he's Black Lightning than when he's Jefferson Pierce. Jefferson Pierce would never say, oh, you just... Give, didn't give a brother an opportunity, right? But Black Lightning is gonna be like, what, what the fuck, you just shoot me? Yeah. <laughs> you do see I have on a suit, right? You do <laughs> I understand, I, you just saw me use my powers, right? <laughs> so you're gonna shoot me. So I think having fun like that will keep it uh, fun and grounded as well. For some reason, that's reminding me of La La Land being accidentally announced as the winner at the Oscars. I don't know why I'm seeing a parallel there. <laughs> but anyway. Um, if, so, two silly questions. One, can he fight in a solar-powered environment? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because the solar power is creating electricity. Yes. I don't know, this was really for plaguing sure. my mind last night. And then for you guys, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? What would your power be? Oh my gosh, you know, um, we have two sons. My youngest asks me all, this all the time. He stumps me and you're stumping me too. But the one I do think that I, I have said consistently and in a way, I already do it, but it's being invisible. Mm -hmm. And I think I really do love observing people. I mean, that's what the core of a lot of, it's one of the foundations or, of what I do as a storyteller. I need to observe, I need to watch human behavior. I need to you know, study it, be like a, the anthropologist, the sociologist sort of person, but to sometimes not be in the room to see you know, the stuff that, you know, because mostly you're observing the, the more public self. You know, I really, I, I love observing. Like in Be Mary Jane, that's why I loved her, I would call it the quiet moments or the alone moments. Like, who are we really when we are alone? And that's, I think that's probably who, we're, who are, when people use the term be yourself, you're probably more yourself when you're alone than this public persona that we put on or this 
our superhero self, you know. Um, but anyway, I think invisible for me. I think I would want to be a shapeshifter, the ability to become different things at different times. I think it would be fun. I would really like know what it feels what like to be white and go into a bank. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <you> know, <laughs> I'd like to get a loan. Of course, of course you do. Come on in. <laughs> like the power to make irritating people go away, but not like to their ill, but just like away from me. <laughs> like transport them to someplace nice, a farm upstate to play with the other irritating people. But teleportation would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, teleportation. Yeah, maybe, 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 yeah. Because not having to deal with TSA. Yeah. But we are also here to uh, take your questions today. Um, we have a person with a microphone who will come to you when you raise your hand. And we're recording this, so we need you to speak into the microphone when you ask your question so you can be part of the recording. So who's got a question? Right here in front with the glasses. Um, you were in a women's panel the other day and someone said that feminism to them was just men and women being equal and i find that a very privileged point of view i'm a single latin mother and my feminism has been getting my choices back the choice to live a rich life a happy life a life that wasn't full of struggle um and i feel like you really represented that with tasha like she she did and made whatever is there a stereotype that you stereotype that you haven't picked up that you want to tell the story of yet? Oh, wow, that is a great question. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this is a stereotype. It's funny because it, I do approach, it's funny when you mention Tasha, a lot of times I like to go in, I like to enter the character through the, the say, global stereotype of a person and then unpack it and, and basically sort of peel it back to the point of, oh, wait a minute, they're just like me, they're human, yeah, duh. You know what I'm saying, but, it's, but, but, go, but introduce it through that, that way. One of the characters that I, that I have, I have a curiosity about for myself in trying to, to talk about choice is the interracial relationship. And for black women to give them, I'm, A, I have a curiosity, you know what I'm saying, just, one, I have a curiosity, how do you keep negotiating that still in today's time and giving her sort of, giving her space and permission to be. One, it's happening, so it's not like you have to give permission, but to create television or a book or a magazine or these sort of larger mediums reflected back allow for the, the, the safety or the space to take up, if that makes sense. So I think I'm curious about it and I'm, and I have my own thoughts about it. And so that, that I wrestle with that. And especially in a time now where I find that, again, that observer, observing, it's funny when you talk about the choice. I'm observing more specifically even all races, but more specifically black people starting to say, you know what, I'm tired. I'm taking the choice to be tired. I'm tired of explaining who I am. I'm tired of moving my body so it becomes comfortable for you to be in the room with me. I'm not doing that. I, I, and I, I find it very refreshing that I'm not trying to explain. I'm not trying to, um, again, make it comfortable. And I find, I'm, and just even you speaking now, like, no, no, that's not my, that's not my fight. And I think even that conversation between women of, color, of all different colors and backgrounds in the same conversation with white women, there's a, there's a lot that we have in common, but there's such a divide even between the two of th those, well, the, if you just put all color in one group and we have, we, we do have such different issues in that, in that conversation about being feminist. So, um, so yeah, those are still things that I want to unpack and that particular issue I wanna do in a, in a series um, that yeah, that, but I really do want to do in a series. Celine, I, I'm not going to speak on it now because it's really in the gestation process and I really believe in holding it until I can really figure out, figure out how to articulate it. But that's something I really want to tackle epically um, because I think it deserves that conversation. And for women to get in there and have those tough conversations with each other um, 
and it's not just black and white. You know, where is the, you know, where is the Latina? Where is the Asian woman? Where is all other races of women? Let's get in here and have this conversation. Um, we have another question. I feel like there was one right up here in front. Hi. Um, I was wondering, and this is going to go to girlfriends, and if we would ever see a girlfriends reunion, and, <laughs> and um, if you had your choice, or what do you think they would be doing, those four characters, Maya, Joan, Tony, what would they be doing in 2017? You know, it's, uh, Salim can attest to this. I have tried. You know, it's very, let me back up. I don't know is the short answer. I don't know. And what's interesting to me is, as passionate as you, or I can hear in the question, or I've heard the question on Twitter, Instagram, other panels, on the street, you know, in the halls. But there's something, and, and I'm going to speak very honestly, I have gone around town pitching the movie, um, at the best time to pitch the movie, you know, when even Tracy moved to Blackish, where, you know what I'm saying, one of the stars of the show, just at the best. There is not a value. You talked about being a shapeshifter. You know, sometimes it's like, I don't know how, and when we were doing this, I don't know how to help you see what I see. Mm -hmm. Like when we, the 7.7 .7 million, I saw that, but you're, oh my God, I told you. Like, I don't, but I don't know how to, to, to translate that. Um, and I've often said, guys, there's so much money on the table. And it's not, again, death domestically. Girlfriends is in many, many countries in the continent of Africa, they are rabbit fans of girlfriends and they have money. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, there's just money out there, but there is a lack of value that, and I, and I, and I don't know how to, and, and that happened during the series. Um, I've tried to tell them, guys, we could sell DVDs. And they didn't start selling DVDs until like the fourth or the fifth season. But that wasn't because we weren't having the conversation from the get-go. Um, it was- Is it even streaming anywhere? It's no, it's not even streaming. Like I even, I even, I was in a Netflix meeting on a different occasion and then I, any chance I had to get the opportunity, I try to tell people, I'm telling you, it's, I don't know. So I don't know how to help that. And, and, and if I keep fighting the girlfriend's fight, that one, Reunion and I, and I would love to give it. I would love to give it in some sort of way. I can't keep making girlfriends or the game or Black Lightning or something else, you know, or, or, or all the other other stories or getting to the epic, you know, the conversation about feminism and I can't get to all those things holding on to that one moment. Um, but it has not come without effort. That's sort of what I meant about frustration of progress, that if something that was a proven hit, that there isn't a way for you to explain to them, like, people watch this. They will want to watch this on Netflix. There's a whole generation of people that are missing out on this for, like, actually no reason at all. Like, I don't, I, I mean, hey, I'm sure it's worse for you, but now I'm kind of mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> right behind the last question. And then. Hi, uh, I just want to thank you guys for being here, first off. And then I have a bit of a two-part question. One is just for my own personal. Um, is there any possibility of Virgil Hawkins, AKA Static Shock, showing up in the series? <laughs> I'm a huge Static Shock fan from my childhood, and so when I heard Black Lightning was getting a... Uh, was that you on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, oh, I can't remember, but... I can't believe this. This is just an older version of Static Shock. <laughs> That was you, wasn't it? No, no, because I watched the old Super Friends show that introduced Black Lightning. Uh, I love the idea of, of Static Shock. And, you know, in success, hopefully, we'll be able to, you know, pull other characters in in that way. So I'm holding out hope because I love that character. And then the second question I had was just regarding, like, intersectionality. Um, I, know, I know with the daughters, you're probably going to be exploring, like, what does it mean to be a feminist and with uh, being a black superhero, but is there any possibility of like um, LGBT storylines showing oh, up yeah. in the future? Oh, have you been reading our scripts already? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? It's no, we're definitely, there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff, a lot of good stuff, and so you'll definitely see that uh, aspect of, 
of society. You know, I grew up, I had uh, three uncles, and all, one of them was Uncle T, one of them was Uncle Donald. Uncle Donald was like 6'5", and like maybe 250, and he was a, a short order cook. And I loved Uncle Donald because when he would babysit me, um, he would give me all this great advice about dating. And of course, I was like five. <laughs> but the other thing that I found fascinating about my Uncle Donald was that he uh, dressed up like a woman. And so I grew up around all of these men who dressed up like women. And so I just, when I hear that, I don't hear a cause, I hear my family, you know what I mean? So when, I, when, when we were doing Black Lightning, this character came out because I was talking about, in the writer's room, you talk about a lot of shit. And so we, I wound up telling people about my Uncle Donald and we were like, oh, we could fit. So to answer your question, yes, but I, I, what I was trying to say, I think, is it's gonna be more from less of a cause and more of a family member, you know what I mean? This, this is just, it just is. So. Well, even the character Anissa, who is, it will also be Thunder, um, she is a lesbian in the show, so we have to deal with her. Her. Um, she was a lesbian in the comic as well. Yeah, so we do have to deal with that too, and I think it's, it's great. Again, I think storytelling allows, I, I'd say two prong, it's a, it's a campfire for people to come and tell their stories and just relax and be themselves, but it's also a way to make space for, hey, tell me your story. Tell me what it's like to be that. So yes, and, and I'm looking forward to that. And then right behind that gentleman, that I feel like that woman raised her hand twice and I passed her over. So <laughs> right there. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited to hear that Black Lightning is gonna be talking about some of these social issues. Um, what issue are you most excited to kind of bring to screen? And what issue do you think you're gonna get the most pushback from the network? <laughs> hmm. You know, it's interesting, I have to, you know, so far there hasn't been any pushback. It's, it's really been embracing um, the ideas that uh, we've been talking about. I think, that, I think the larger issue that I really wanna talk about is violence, the idea of violence, and what are the positive aspects of violence and what are the negative aspects of violence and what's in between, right? So. You know, Jefferson is a follower of Dr. King, Jefferson, right? We, but Black Lightning will whoop your ass, right? So that duality is in him is what we want to explore. And not only with him, but with Anissa when she gets her powers, because we're looking at the social justice issues through her eyes, not through his. She's the one out in the streets. The young people are out in the streets. And, and so when she gets these powers, having seen what goes down in the protests and those sort of things, well now, man, what happens when she's in a protest and she gets pushed? You know, what happens if somebody, you know, tries to harm her and she has these powers? Um, does a peaceful protest become a violent protest? Does she become violent? So all of that we want to negotiate in the community where the violence is taking place. So we not only, when we talk about social justice, I don't only want to talk about police brutality, which is a hot topic and should be talked about. And this may be somewhat controversial for me to say, but if we stop killing each other, you know what I mean? I think that that issue right now to me is way more important for me, for me personally, to stop young black people from killing young black people, to stop young people in general from killing each other with these damn guns. It's, we've, gotten, we've gotten too used to it. It doesn't even shock us anymore. It doesn't shock us anymore when we hear about a mom getting shot with her three-year-old. It's like the same thing with homelessness. We just walk past that shit now. It doesn't, it doesn't register that that's someone sleeping on the ground in, in our country. It doesn't register with us anymore. So I don't want children because they don't talk about it like that, right? In Chicago, you don't hear, oh, this child, this 17-year-old child shot another 17-year-old child. They're looking, they're reporting it like it's 
fully grown people who are just getting off work shooting each other. No, these are kids in the street with guns killing each other. And I don't know if you've ever seen a body that's been shot, but it's violent, it's not pretty. And so to answer your question, and so you don't need a drink when you leave here. <laughs> I want to explore that aspect of social justice, because to me, that, that is a big part of it, us not killing each other. I would add to that um, sexual violence against women, young girls. That has been something I started talking about strongly in Being Mary Jane, and I think it's something I would like to continue. Um, it's even introduced in, in, the, in the first episode. It, it, taking care of, taking the, using Black Lightning as a, not just the character, but as a concept of going back and taking care of our communities, which are girls, and realizing they are getting snatched and this is what's happening to them, and our children. Um, I think also unpacking and helping to have a bridge of understanding and empathy for the ghetto, you know, for the, you know, and how are people living, you know, and, 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 and you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, there's understanding, um, what was that play? Oh, was it Ma Rainey's? Oh, it was Ma Rainey's Black, Bo Ma, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, right? Yeah. And it was an August Wilson play, I recently saw it, and it was so impactful. I feel like August Wilson, I don't know for sure, obviously, but I feel like he answered the question. I think back in the 80s, in the 80s and 90s, people were killing each other over stepping over their shoes. Like, he shot me for stepping on my shoes. It's just a ridiculous statement. I think you can throw it off and people will say, that's nuts, that's crazy, that's stupid, that's all these things. And if you see that play, he unpacks the challenges, what it is like to be a black man in America or a black person in America aspiring for something and how you actually would be so enraged over your life and that what the shoes represent was just progress and that someone would disrespect you, the one thing that you have of your own and they would disrespect you and really you didn't kill somebody because they stepped on your shoes. You killed somebody because they keep stepping on you. And, and I, and in the disrespect of that. And so I, unpacking what it's like to live and what it means and that frustration and that stress and that anger and stress is what's killing us or is the trigger to the gun. So just trying to unpack as much as we can as an and understanding we have to do it, it's not a book, you know, it's not a deep lecture, but how do we make an audience feel and understand it a little bit more so that it would maybe drive them to a, a book that unpacks it differently, you know? Well, and one of the things, if you saw in the trailer, um, that the school looks clean, right? The school is, you know, I don't know, I remember that movie, uh, lean on me, and I, and I watched it like right before I wrote the pilot. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> if you watch the beginning of that movie, it's like fucking animals in that, in, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, this is to me unacceptable because if you have a school, this is, so when I was watching it, I was like really like, wow, this is, so I was determined to like make sure that the school was clean and that the neighborhoods, because people talk about the ghetto like it's, you know, you go past the 10 freeway in LA and then every, it's just hell, you know what I mean? <laughs> but when you go to these communities and the communities that I grew up in like that, the houses are, people take care of their lawns, people paint their fences, they have, you know, it's a hard working, you know, for some reason blue collar has just been given to white people. You know, my father was a plumber, you know, my mother was a nurse, you know, so these blue collar people working in these neighborhoods, the problem is that the neighborhoods are infested with guns. And you have a great deal of people who are unemployed and working in underground industries like drugs, the same way the Kennedys did, right? So 
we want to show, like Mara said, we want to show that these communities are just filled with hardworking people that happen to be besieged by young people who have guns. So you can't go outside. You can. But most people can't go outside in their communities anymore and say, hey, young man, stop that. Don't do that. People are living in fear. You, you will get shot just by trying to say, don't step on my line. I remember back in the day, you know, you step on somebody's line, the old man will come out and be like, get off my lawn, and you run and take off. Nowadays, the old man come out and say, hey, get off my lawn, he gets shot. It just, it makes no sense, you know what I mean? I'm, you notice how I did that? <laughs> they bleeped, I bleeped myself. Good job, all right, we have time for one more question, so make it good. Oh, I have two choices, you or you or, I have three choices, I feel better now. Let's go over there, because we haven't gone over there. Red shirt which you'd be in big trouble on Star Trek with that shirt on. <laughs> the guy in the red shirt always dies first. Oh. Um, I have a question, and you touched on it a little bit. What will the relationship be with Black Lightning slash Jefferson and the police in the show? Because, and I ask that for two reasons. One, he's still a vigilante. And two, unlike most other comic characters, he has just as much a likelihood of having a negative interaction with the police as his alter ego as he does with the superhero, as a superhero. It's funny, again, I, they cut that trailer down. So you saw <laughs> the moment when he was thrown on the, there's a moment what I think you see in the rain and he's thrown on, on the car. He's being thrown on the car by police because there's a scene where he gets pulled over as Jefferson by the police and he goes through it every, at least most black men I know goes through. And uh, you kind of see his daughter. So he's going to have, he's a black man in America, so he's going to have that experience. But also one of Jefferson's, Jefferson's good friends is a police officer. And I have a, a, a friend that's a police officer. So his relationship is complicated, right? Then when you add on the fact that he's black lightning, and he, are you from Canada? Okay. It, it, when, you, when you add on the fact that he's a vigilante, is that, is that how you say? Uh, then, then uh, it makes it even more complicated because there's a, I'm giving away too much, but I won't give that away. But anyway, <laughs> so when you watch the pilot, when you watch the first episode, you'll see what that relationship is like because here's, to your point, here's a 6'5 black man running around Atlanta in this weird ass suit at night. <laughs> and if I'm a cop and I get out of my car and I see that, I'm shooting your ass first <laughs> and I'm asking questions later. It just makes sense to me. That dude, I'm not gonna be able to handcuff. You know, the suit is lighting, lighting up. You know, so I'm gonna shoot you, you know what I mean? So that's, that's an issue for him, you know what and I mean? Also, but, I think as a reluctant hero, because he relu yeah. reluctantly coming back, superhero. He doesn't want to be Black Lightning. He's trying to let also the police, the dynamic of the police, let them do their job. But then you also know that what I like, too, as much as we do even want the police to s protect us, the politics of being a police officer to protect the community, a willing officer to protect the community, just that it, it, it's complicated on their side of the story too. And I think there's an access point into the series to see that complicated nature of um, the police need ability to protect and serve and then the need for someone like a Black Lightning. Um, but then you gotta hide him, but then you have, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, there's a moment in the script where one of the police officers is looking at the television and there's protests and he says, turns it off and he says, I wish they would just talk about all the black lives that we've saved, just once. And I think that that's a legitimate point of view. You know what I mean? So. All right, and before we let you go, I just am always curious about couples that work together. Do you have any kind of rules, like once you cross the threshold, you don't talk about work or you don't talk about work when you're sitting up in bed at night or is it just everything intermingles all the time? We do have a rule, and um, when we come through the threshold of the house, we return to the house as husband and wife and m mommy and daddy, and really do create that space. So yeah, I will be in the, dry in the driveway for a long time finishing my phone call, but um, there, it, there is that, and it is, however, 
let's say we do have to take a call. Sometimes you are at home. And so we do, what I, I, it, I, it's a very lovely thing that it's very natural now. We will ask permission, even of our children. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need to take this call. Are you, are you okay with that? So it just, it, it, even that is an acknowledgement of what the space is supposed to be. Um, but it's also the balance of, I get to come home, but I have to take a couple, couple phone calls. Are you okay with that? Or I could just stay at the office. And the kids are like, no, come home. <laughs> just come home. Um, do you have any other rules? And I think when we're working together, it's, oh, yeah, that's you, if it's like with being Mary Jane, even though I directed the pilot, Mara gets the last word. So I may disagree with something like, because we can go at it sometimes. <laughs> and I may disagree, but at the end of the day on that particular project, she was the boss. So I had to walk away, be pissed off or whatever, you know. The, the, the pissed off director, <laughs> you know, put my scarf around my neck. She does not understand <laughs> you know, what kind of bullshit is this. I can't work like this. You know? <laughs> and so, you know, but on like say Sparkle and now uh, Black Lightning, then now I'm the boss. And so she gets to walk away like, he don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smacking my lips and you get a French accent. He gets to be French. Yeah, you, you see what that is? Because that's what you do. I need to get to that show. Don't I have to unpack something? Because that's what you do. <laughs> he don't get it. All right, if you want to. Now I'm rolling my yeah, eyes in you, my neck. Yeah, okay. don't act like you don't do it. You, you trying right. to be all sadiddy in front of these people. I said sadiddy. You know what that means. Shit. Don't get in front of these people and act like you don't know what sadiddy means. Can we get this, this man off the I stage? Know, I know. All I'm going to say is. And back to writing. Happy wife, happy life, brother. All right. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you, too, for being here. Have the best part of your ATX.